lasting from approximately 201 to 174 million years ago, the early Jurassic was a transitional period for life on land. Reptiles which were common in the late Triassic, like Phytosaurs and Trilophosaurs, had become extinct by the beginning of the Jurassic. In contrast, dinosaurs were relatively unaffected by the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event, and subsequently became the most dominant terrestrial vertebrates for the remainder of the Mesozoic era. New types of dinosaurs, like heterodontosaurids and the famous stegosaurids, first appeared here in the early Jurassic, and would go on to radiate into an abundance of species. Also dominant during this time were the various kinds of pterosaur which replaced those that died out in the Triassic. Among these early pterosaurs, the medium-sized Dimorphodon is perhaps the most interesting. Dimorphodon had a body length of around 1 meter and a wingspan of approximately 1.45. This pterosaur had a strangely bulky skull whose weight was reduced by the presence of large openings. Towards the front of its skull, Dimorphodon's jaws were equipped with long fang-like teeth. These were followed by smaller teeth which lined the remainder of this pterosaur's jaws. Dimorphodon also possessed a long tail which was stiffened towards the end. This tail has been speculated to have carried a terminal tail vein, though no fossilized impressions have yet been discovered to prove this hypothesis. As was the case for many pterosaurs, Dimorphodon was once believed to engage in soaring like many seabirds do today. However, more recent analysis has pointed out that its short wings would have made such behavior difficult if not impossible. Its large head and relatively robust skeleton would have made flight even more demanding, leading researchers to believe that Dimorphodon was a very poor flyer. Instead, this creature would have only reluctantly taken to the air for short, frantic flights. This behavior is also seen in modern game birds and tinamou. Although Dimorphodon is an early pterosaur, its limited flight should not be seen as an ancestral trait, since earlier pterosaurs like Preondactylus were capable flyers. Since Dimorphodon was unable to sustain flight for very long, it must have spent most of its time on the ground. Initial depictions of this pterosaur imagined that it was very awkward and ungainly when moving on land. This hypothesis was soon replaced by the idea that Dimorphodon was an active and agile animal. Certain researchers believe that this species was able to run bipedally due to its developed hind limbs and characteristics of its pelvis. However, a variety of factors, like its low center of gravity and the presence of fossilized pterosaur trackways, indicate that Dimorphodon was a quadruped. Like other similar pterosaurs, Dimorphodon seems to have been a capable climber that probably scaled surfaces in a comparable fashion to modern squirrels. Dimorphodon's diet has also been a major area of debate among researchers. At one point, it was thought that this pterosaur lived on a fish-based diet. However, this theory has since been dismissed, since fish would have been very difficult to catch for a pterosaur with limited flight capability. Another hypothesis points towards an insectivorous diet, and is based primarily on the fact that Dimorphodon could close its jaws extremely quickly but with little force. Paleontologist Mark Witten has argued that this species was too large to be an insectivore, and was instead a specialized carnivore of small vertebrates. Dental microware analysis performed on Dimorphodon fossils seems to confirm that this pterosaur fed upon vertebrates. The early Jurassic saw the appearance of numerous species of pterosaur, 
but Dimorphodon's unusual habits and bizarre appearance solidifies its position as one of the most intriguing.